I drive my vehicle to the south entrance off of Highway 99, and I'm thinking, okay, he's running south towards Highway 99. Most likely, he's going to hit Highway 99, cross Highway 99 on foot, and try and disappear into the businesses over there. Um, so I get to the south entrance, and I'm thinking, this is a great spot because I can see up Highway 99 to see if he crosses um, or if he like pops out. If he's running behind the businesses and the bank, he'll pop out there and I'll see him. But I look just like a customer leaving the bank because my back window's tinted um, and I'm just sitting there waiting for traffic. Mm -hmm. I notice uh, I see Anderson uh, coming south on Highway 99. I believe he had his emergency lights on. I see a patrol car coming down Highway 99. He had his lights on. And about that time, in my rearview mirror, I notice who I believe to be the suspect walking from behind the bank um, and stepping out from behind the bank where I could see him. So he stepped out of the southeast corner, back by where the drive through is. Mm -hmm. um, and just about that time, Anderson's passing me on Highway 99, and he says on the radio, Jeremy, he's right behind you. So um, I realize that, or I think that they're passing me, but I'm, I'm trying to keep an eye on him, knowing that he's armed. Um, and I'm keeping an eye on him, and then next thing I know, Anderson and the patrol car come bombing into the parking lot um, in their vehicles, separate vehicles. Uh, I didn't, I sat there and waited because I'm like, at this point, he's just kind of mulling around. Um, it does me no good to throw my truck in reverse and go and address him by myself. Um, but once I saw those guys go in, then I put my truck into reverse and I backed into the parking lot and I jump out, so I believe um, Anderson is in the south part of the parking lot, and the patrol car, who I'm later figuring out, I think is uh, Deputy Feller, um, is on the northern part closest to the bank, and I'm somewhere backed in between them. So I hop out, and I can hear Anderson yelling drop the gun drop the gun drop the gun and i just keep hearing that i see the suspect um again now i know that this is the suspect because anderson was part of the takedown team and saw him run from the car and anderson said he's right behind you um so I, i'm not looking at anderson obviously but i can hear him screaming drop the gun drop the gun I look at the suspect and I just kind of get fixated on he's holding the, his phone out in his left hand in a really odd manner. And just what was going through my mind was, holy shit, he's live streaming this thing. And I just started thinking, why is he doing that? That is incredibly, that's in, just, it was weird. It kind of, it kind of made me fixate on it. And uh, so then I, I never see a gun at that point because I'm fixated on the phone. And he starts moving to the north. I remember that. Um, I'm not giving any kind of commands because I don't want to walk over Robert, who's given him very clear commands. Um, and he's going to the north. I'm starting to think about possibly other uh, deputies or officers coming from behind the bank that could be coming towards him. Um, and I obviously I don't want to lose sight of the suspect um, who looks like he might be heading back towards the back of the bank again. And then I start hearing um, gunshots from which I believe were from the south, uh, which would be Anderson's direction. I'm not seeing the gun. So, and um, I mean, I'm keenly aware of today's climate and what's going on and all this stuff. And I, and I, 
I've been doing this job for, you know, 13, maybe a little bit over 13 years. And this whole time I've decided I will not pull the trigger unless I absolutely have to. I mean, absolutely have to. So I'm, I'm hearing shots, but I'm not seeing why I should be shooting at this point. So I, I don't shoot. Um, I think I hear shots to the north, and I'm still, I'm still not seeing why I should be shooting. Um, again, I should say I, I don't think I ever looked at Anderson or Feller, um, and I really don't know if at, at this point maybe other officers could have arrived. But I heard I, I heard shots from the south, and I believe I heard shots from the north. At some point, um, I remember hearing the shots, but the suspect did not look like they were affecting him at all. I'm thinking, well, whoever's shooting is missing. Um, I do remember seeing some rounds impact the dirt berm behind the suspect. And I'm just thinking these are having no effect. Um, at some point, uh, the suspect and you guys showed me the video. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, I remember, uh, I don't remember the exact transition, but he blatantly, quickly points the gun at me. Um, and like I said before, that I've been doing this for quite a while and I've made up my mind that I'll, I won't pull the trigger unless I absolutely have to. And in fact, there's been a number of times in my career where I've actually picked up the slack on my trigger and let go because things de-escalated um, or I was able to do something to prevent having to do that. When he pointed that gun at me, it was so fast and the first thing that went through my brain was, oh shit, it's too late. I'm way behind the curve. Um, you know, in law enforcement, we're trained action beats reaction and uh, I, I'm thinking I'm about to take rounds. Uh, my focus goes right to my front sight tip. Um, suspect's blurry behind it, and I fired. Um, I think I fired five to six times. Um, I've I've got like auditory exclusion. These rounds aren't really loud. They're pretty muffled, and I think I hear shots coming from the north the south um i'm thinking am i hit because i was way behind the curve and i'm thinking there's a good chance you're probably hit but i'm like i don't feel any pain but my adrenaline could be masking i mean i you know i'm in a life or death moment right now so i'm thinking okay um i i fired like i said i thought i fired five to six times very rapidly I came off my front sight tip to assess the threat to see if it was still a threat. And uh, I didn't see the gun anymore at that point. Um, he went, the suspect went down to, I, I believe it was to his back. Um, but again, I didn't think that the rounds were effective. Um, I wasn't seeing anything that showed like he was injured or hurt or um, or anything. One other thing that I want to say to you, I just want to back up for a second. When Robert was giving commands and I was kind of watching the phone, um, he the suspect was not compliant at all. And, and on top of that, I mean, like it was almost like we weren't even there. He was just doing it. There was no dialogue, no nothing. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Um, when I shot, I would estimate I was probably 30 yards from the suspect. Um, so anyway, I, I shot, I came off my front sight. He goes to his back. Um, I'm thinking that, I don't think this guy is injured. I don't even know. I couldn't even tell, if, tell you if he was hit or not. Um, so I'm thinking we're still in a very dangerous situation because as fast as he pointed it at me the first time, he could point it that fast again. So I'm telling him, put your hands in the air, put your hands in the air, and I'm backing up to the front uh, passenger side quarter panel of the patrol car. 
um, I get behind the patrol car and I tell him, put your hands in the air. So he's on his back and with his like elbows and triceps still on the pavement, he does put his hands up in the air. Um, I don't see the gun in his hands and um, he keeps them there. Um, I remember hearing on the radio shots fired and I said suspects down on the radio. Um, and then at some point, his hands lower back down to where I can't see them anymore. Um, I, I tell him, put your hands, but there's no response at that point. After, after he lowers him and I tell him to put his hands up again, he doesn't put his hands up again. Um, this happens so fast. Like, I can't even describe... Um, like me sitting here talking this through sounds like it took some time, but it happened so fast that uh, it felt like really, it's weird how my mind replays it all, but that was doing, it was doing everything at once. Mm -hmm. um, so then I noticed, um, I believe it was Sergeant Sofianos on the south side of the bank, like right in front of the bank on the sidewalk, and he's starting to form uh, an apprehension team. And there was somebody in front with a shield, I believe. Um, he's asking, where's the gun over the radio? And I say it's not on his left side, which is the south side, uh, the way he's laying because his head would be to the east and his feet would be to the west. So his, his left side, <clears throat> south side, the gun wasn't visible. He later says, um, okay, we see it. It's uh, about three feet from him to the north. I noticed the drone in the air. The drone went up in the air. Um, and then when so decided it was safe, I watched them go up. It looked like probably six or seven people on the apprehension team. Mm -hmm. They got to him, and then it looked like some of them might have been medically trained or something because it looked like they were giving him medical treatment like right away. Um, at that point, uh, I, I don't remember if it was before or after they approached him, but I remember Feller, who was to my left, to the north on the other side of his patrol car, looking at me with a very shocked look on his face and he just kept asking me, are you okay, are you okay? So now I'm thinking again, did I take rounds? And I'm kind of looking and I don't see any injuries. 